Hello, for those of you that were not able to join us today uh, while we talked about the Book of Enoch from chapters 1 through 10, I just wanted to make a shorter video for you to kind of catch up with us and follow along. So the reason that we're looking at the Book of Enoch uh, first in our apocryphal text review or study is because it's mentioned a few times in the Bible, in the New Testament specifically. Um, the name of Enoch is mentioned specifically, um, there we are, you can see it here, um, but there's also other references to things that happened. For example, um, if God had not, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And I'm sure some of you have heard that's what hell is, a place where God had condemned um, a, what, a third of heaven or rebellious angels um you may have heard it in those ways where does that come from because it's not really found in the bible and some of these other comments about new heaven and earth um about uh certain things that have happened that are referred to as a past event these are kind of found in the bible and they're referred to from the book of enoch but the book of enoch itself is not in the bible except for like the ethiopian coptic bible this also is an interesting part where a lot of people have talked about, um, we're gonna switch over, sorry, to the new international version, uh, just because that's a little easier. Um, the texts or the uh, books that we used or the websites that we use to refer to these books, I'll put them in the details section below, but we have blueletterbible.org or blb.org. I really like this site. Um, it lets you check out different versions of the Bible. Now we talk about Noah and being Noah and all of this stuff about how God regretted making humans and he had to flood the earth. But these first four um, verses are pretty interesting. And these you probably have heard about in terms of the Nephilim, which we see here. Um, and you may have heard this verse a few times. The sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married them as they chose. And there was also a comment, not here, talks about the Nephilim on the earth in these days, but in the King James Version, um, which is why I did have it out, because that was the version I checked last for this reason, it says there were giants in the earth in those days. And some of you may have heard, um, especially like the giant Goliath for the from the story of David and Goliath. Some of you may have been brought up in church um, as I was hearing things like, well, yes, technically Goliath was a giant, you know, but people were really short in those days. So Goliath was just like a really tall person, but he wasn't a giant giant like we're thinking in mythology. Okay, so that's where we kind of start here. The Book of Enoch, um, I'm reading from sacredtext.com and I will put a link to that as well. I really like this translation of the Book of Enoch. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize the chapters for you. We really got into them in the live stream that is uploaded as a video that you can watch now. So if you can check that out if you want more information. So basically we start off with Enoch. Enoch is a guy who doesn't die, okay? He's just sort of taken up into heaven um, like Ezekiel, uh, like Jesus, okay? And he's talking about this situation um, in the future. That's what he, he said, uh, tends to be talking about. And the future though is not our future it's it's a future from his perspective which is the far past and this is the like the noah time okay so he's basically talking about how a bunch of stuff is going to happen god's going to destroy everything in the earth the people that were righteous those people will be saved the people that are not righteous those people won't be saved okay this is not any new type of thing that you haven't heard before especially if you've read the book of revelation uh, chapters two and three are quite short, but it basically talks about how everything works the way that it does because God set it up that way. We made a joke in this that we're literally talking about look at the trees. Okay, chapter four and five also do that as well. Look at the trees, literally observe ye the trees, right? And it basically goes on from those previous chapters to say everything works wonderfully because God has set it up that way. Everything is perfect because God has set it up that way. Well, everything but you. You done goofed, right? You really messed this stuff up, okay? And that's kind of the, the issue. Everything was great except for you. 
all of this stuff God has made is awesome, except for you, okay? And this is why you're not going to find mercy. This is why you're going to be destroyed. But if you are, you know, a good and godly person, then you will be spared this destruction, okay? So that's where we kind of are here. Now we're talking about the fall of the angels. So in this is where we see that men had multiplied, humans were numerous on the earth, and that their daughters were beautiful. Okay, We're introduced to these angels, and basically in this chapter we're talking about these angels, um, and they're called the Watchers. Okay, There's different classifications or job titles of angels. These are the Watchers. Their captain, their leader, is this guy named Samjaza. And Samjaza is captain over these other guys, okay, these other angels. These angels are also in charge of other things, so you can sort of think about it as Samjaza is their captain. And these other ten are the squad leaders. And then there's other watchers under them, and that's how you can kind of think about that. Basically, Samjaza and the other watchers are looking at Earth and saying, those are some pretty ladies. Wouldn't it be great if we had, like, families, you know? Yeah, I like being up here, hanging out with you guys. You guys are all pretty great. But wouldn't it be nice to, like, go down to Earth and, like, have a family? And the other angels were like, yeah, it's... Or the other watchers were like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And so Samjaza says, listen, um, let's do that. But we all got to do it together. Because the last thing I want is for us to say, yeah, that's cool, let's do it. And then I'm the only one that goes there. And then you guys tell on me and God like punishes me. That that would suck. I don't want that. Can you guys just come together with me? And they all said, yes, we're all going to do the thing. Okay. Literally, we're all going to do this thing. All right. Um, they end up descending onto Mount Hermon. And the reason it's named uh, Hermon here, uh, we looked it up and it basically would... In, in modern English uh, would probably translate to like the mountain of oaths or the mountain of, of, of promises, something like that. Um, so they swear this oath that they're all going to be in this together. If we all, if you get in trouble, we're all going to be in trouble. Okay. Why are they going to get in trouble? Why is God going to be so upset? This part they were expecting. Okay. They go down there, they hang out with women, they teach them some stuff, and they make them pregnant, and they're going to have a family. The rest of this, not a great time. Okay, so let's talk about this section just kind of as an overview real quick. One common thing we're going to notice about the Watchers is not only were they tasked with watching Earth, literally watching them, right? They're the Watchers, but they also have knowledge. And that's what we can talk about. We really got into this about sin and this concept of witchcraft or magic and all this stuff. Magic and witchcraft. Another way to say it is demonized knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the less faithful you are, right? That's, that's a, a, I guess, a, tr a thing that we can just stay as a statement that's true. If I know how to fix a certain medical issue that I have, I'm not going to pray that it gets fixed. I'm going to do the thing that makes it happen. Um, when we think about, you know, the medieval ages, the inquisition, the witches, the witch burnings, the witch trials uh, later on in Salem, which were not witch burnings, um, we think, how could they believe that witches are real? Those people are silly. They weren't. Witches are real, but this is not like casting magical spells, Harry Potter stuff. These are people that have knowledge that leads them away from faith. If I'm vomiting and one of the local people knows how to stop me from vomiting by giving me a special tea blend, I'm going to go to that person. I'm not going to go to the church and ask for uh, repenting, forgiveness. I'm not going to donate. I'm not going to be faithful. Okay. And so that's the problem with knowledge. And what do we start off with in Genesis anyway? We start off with everything's fine, except don't eat that tree because that's the tree of knowledge. And from external source, which would be the serpent, whether you want to say it's an enchanted serpent, Satan, or some other thing, um, that external source gets the two people in the garden to consume of this knowledge fruit. Okay, So that's what we're kind of 
dealing with here. It's important. It's going to show up in this uh, next couple chapters. Okay. So what's going on after they get pregnant? They end up giving birth to giants. 3,000 L's is 3.4 kilometers. That's how tall these giants are. So when, you know, I was in church and they're talking about giants were not really giants, they're just tall dudes, they're not. These are people that are literally the size of a mountain, okay? These are gigantic, born in baby size, but then grew very rapidly. And that's kind of what's going on here. Because now, how do we feed these babies? We just can't. They're getting bigger and bigger, they're eating everything in the village, and eventually they start eating the people, okay? And then they just start to eat everything. So they go out looking for food. They're just hungry giants. That's, that's all they are. They're not, you know, talked about as particularly cruel or anything like that. They're just really hungry and they're just eating. Okay, that's all they're doing. As this is happening, other angels like Azazel, which he was not mentioned in one of the captains or squad leaders. So he's another of the watchers though. He's teaching them how to make things, making swords, knives, um, you know, breastplates, things like that. These are the metals. He's also teaching them how to make things to look nice, jewelry, makeup, okay? This we can kind of think about as maybe another, like a great god of metallurgy, like Hephaestus, okay? Um, plus makeup. <laughs> Hephabulous, maybe? Okay. And... We'll skip this for a second. Simjaza teaches enchantments and root cuttings. Okay, what are enchantments? It's a type of psychology. That's really what enchanting and charming is. It's a type of psychology where you just use your charisma. That's all it really is, okay? Um, these are not, we can think about them as a, a magical kind of thing, but they're not, again, it's not this weird, doing things that break the laws of physics kind of magic. This is knowledge that has been demonized, okay? Um, so root cuttings, astrology, um, learning about constellations. The knowledge of the clouds is things like the weather and uh, the sun. Um, and then the moon, the course of the moon. And of course, now we can have uh, calendars and stuff based on the, the lunar cycle, okay? While this is happening, there is godlessness. What we have to remember here is that godlessness is not bad or evil. Godlessness is something that is against God. Okay, what does God want? Faith and worship. And that's actually stated very specifically later on in chapter 10. God wants faith and worship. That's all he wants. He doesn't want you to know stuff and to do things on your own. And that's the problem. That's the, the sin that's being committed. Okay, it's a sin because it's against Yahweh's will. But it's not a sin in that is in, it is immoral. These are people that are learning. That's all they're doing is they're learning stuff about their world. That's it. But because they're not worshiping Yahweh instead, this is what makes them punished. Okay. So they are committing fornication. Again, there's nothing wrong with committing fornication, right? This is a very, not only human thing, this is a very animal thing, okay? Every living creature that doesn't reproduce asexually reproduces sexually. This is not a weird, bad, immoral kind of thing. It's just bad because it's against what Yahweh asked you to do. That's the only reason that it is a sinful thing, okay? Led astray. Remember, these are not are not committing any wrongdoings. Being led astray is just, I can learn to do this myself instead of having faith that Yahweh will do it for me. That's, that's all it is, okay? And that's the corruption, okay? They're able to do something themselves. Because of this, and because people are being eaten by these giants, they start dying, right? Because they're being eaten, right? As they die, they are complaining. They're crying out to heaven. This whole chapter here, chapter 9, basically goes that the archangels, Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel are hanging out in heaven and they start hearing this big commotion on the gates of heaven. They go and check it out and see there's just a bunch of souls there 
screaming and crying about some stuff that's going on on Earth. And they're just like, what's going on? Why are all these people here? What are they going on about? Looking, you know, wait, 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 where are the Watchers at? Uh, what's going on on Earth? So nobody even noticed this was happening until these people started dying, right? If that kind of gives you a sense of the loneliness of the Watchers, okay? So I want you to think about this as not you know, for, for what they really are in this story. They're not these angels that are rebellious. They're these angels that are doing a job nobody cares about. Having knowledge they're not allowed to share, so they learned a bunch of stuff that they can't use, and they have to just sit there in a job that nobody's monitoring them because nobody cares about this job. It's literally just look at Earth. Watch it. Make sure it's not, you know, falling apart. But as we saw in the first few chapters of Enoch, nothing's going to fall apart. God made everything not do that. God made everything function in a very normal and mechanical way. It's not going to collapse. So what are the watchers watching? They have a non-job. They're bored. And they see that there's these women there that maybe we can have a family and have an actual life. And we can use our knowledge and share it with humans. That's what the watchers are doing. They're not trying to do this like angry rebellion, okay? And to, again, really underscore the fact that they have such a non-job. Nobody even noticed anything was happening on Earth until the archangels started hearing this commotion at the gates of heaven and the souls were explaining to them, hey, there's a bunch of stuff going wrong on Earth. Maybe you guys should look into that. Okay, so this is such a weird kind of setup. So the... Angels, the archangels, go to God and say, God, hey, um, you know everything that's going on. Please fix it. That's all, that's all what this is. Okay. You know everything that's going on. Please fix it. All right. So what does God do? So God tells Uriel, one of the archangels, go to Noah. Okay. Now, if you guys were ever wondering, reading in Genesis 6, what made Noah so special, right? Noah was a drunk, okay? If you've read around, you know, this stuff, you'll know that Noah was a drunk. He got drunk regularly, got naked, and whenever, you know, one of his kids tried to cover up his naked butt, this kid was cursed by Noah. Not a great guy. Kind of a jerk, okay? A drunken jerk. That's all Noah really was. And yet the Bible talks about... Noah finding grace. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Noah was not perfect, but his genetics were, his genealogy was. Noah was not part of this group that ended up hanging out with the Watchers and none of Noah's offspring were, like his grandkids were not, you know, these Watcher human hybrids. That's what made Noah perfect. He was still 100% genetically human. He wasn't corrupted by all this information from the Watchers, probably because he was such a drunk. So Noah, instead of like learning about stuff or whatever, he was more concerned with just getting blasted at the bar. And that saves him. Okay. So when we wonder why was Noah considered sinless, he wasn't perfect it's not that he was a good person. It's not that he was an educated person. It's that he wasn't committing the sin of knowledge. Okay, so that's why Noah was chosen and his kids were chosen. And this is where it says, you know, we're going to flood the earth and everything and let him know that he can be escaped so that his seed may be preserved for the generations of the world. So that way it's just, hey, I want to do a hard reset on earth. Um... You know, but we still have some viable human DNA. Make sure that those guys don't get the hard reset. Okay. Now we're starting to punish the angels here. Okay. Azazel just gets punished by being bound, thrown into a ditch in the desert, and then covered up with rocks. And he's going to hang out there until Judgment Day. Okay. And the other guys, um, the other watchers here, Semjaza and his associates. So Semjaza, remember, is the um, the captain, and the other guys are his uh, his like squad leaders. Okay, 
these are where the hell kind of angels get created, all right? So Simjaza and his squad leaders now have to not only suffer in hell, okay? They're not only suffering this punishment from God that's going to last for eternity, but first they have to watch their wives and their children just be slaughtered, okay? While all of this, um, you know, pre-flood stuff is going on, and Noah's being instructed to do this, you know, build this ark and, you know, collect these animals and whatever, humans are fighting each other. So there's this huge, like, slaughtering battle going on, okay? Um, and so the, the God, one of the punishments instructed by God for the Watchers is that they have to observe their families dying in these, this, like, terrible battle, all right? Once all their kids have killed each other and whatever, bind them, the watchers, um, and then until the day of judgment, once the day of judgment happens after 70 generations, they will be sent off to an abyss of fire. Okay. It's a prison of torment. They're going to be there forever. And anybody else that is part of their evil, remember evil is not bad or harmful. Evil is sinful against God. So other people that are committing the sins of not worshiping God, committing the sins of education, they're also going to go with those watchers when they die. Okay. This is how hell is created. All right. So destroy everything off the face of the earth. And after that, make sure that everything goes back to how it was and that everyone will offer adoration to me and they will all worship me. And then that's going to make Earth better again. Okay. So this, again, is not that people were wicked and cruel and awful. This is that people were learning stuff. Because a bunch of angels that nobody cared about decided to try to have a life. And oops, we created this havoc that happened on Earth. And again, nobody even noticed until a bunch of souls showed up. Okay. Hopefully this kind of explains the whole Noah situation a little bit better um, and definitely explains where hell started. The writers of the New Testament definitely would have had access to the Book of Enoch. That's why they re reference it. Um, but you're not going to see a lot of references to it necessarily uh, in the Old Testament because it's it was written uh, what, like the first century BCE. Um, that's before Common Era. And we talk about that also in the, the other thing. So if you do have time, um, there's nothing in particular that you have to watch. It's similar to this where I have like a website, I'm going through it and I'm explaining it. You don't necessarily have to watch it. So if you, you know, don't have anything else to do or you're busy with some kind of mindless task or chores or errands or what have you, and you want to just pop in your headphones and listen to something, um, you can definitely do that. There's nothing important to watch if you don't want to. Uh, we will be continuing this later on, and that's that's all I got for you for today, okay? I uh, hope to see you in one of the classes, and that's all I got.